Hey guys, what is going on? Carter here. Got another video for you. This is on the Balor Arms Teutonic Arming Sword from Cult of Athena. Uh, before I begin, let me preface this by saying uh, the reason I'm doing this video is, is um, because I haven't seen a lot on this particular sword. And I know when I was looking at Balor Arms, I kind of wanted to know what quality was I getting? You know, what, what was I getting myself into? Is it a decent sword for the money? That kind of thing. So that is the question that I plan to answer with this video, hopefully, at least to a degree anyways, uh, at least more for this particular sword than other swords than other videos I've seen on this sword. Uh, anyway, so. Balor Arms. So Balor Arms is uh, exclusively through Cult of Athena. They have gotten with a Indian forge and created an exclusive line of swords, this being one of those. So as such, this is pretty much in line with most Indian made swords for the most part, except you're going to get exclusive designs from this particular line. Now I can't really speak to the entire line as this is the only example of Balor Arms that I have. Uh, but I will attempt to somewhat generalize based off of other things I've heard and then just my familiarity with uh, Indian forges. So let's start off. This will be hopefully pretty brief, um, but I just wanted to touch on a few things. So let's start with the scabbard because the last time I tried to shoot this video, I completely forgot about this. Um, so I'm redoing it. So this is a pretty decent scabbard in terms of quality. Brown leather, wood core, I believe it's wood core. Um, it's gotta be wood core. Metal shape, as you can see right here, uh, pretty decent, you know, finished all right, nothing spectacular. It does kind of have some decorative raised areas that look pretty nice. Overall, the quality's good, the leather's decent. I really like the color, don't mind these. Uh, didn't come this way. I did that, you know, I'm awesome. So I, I spilled stuff on it, that's what I do. Uh, the only thing I can really knock this scabbard for is the fact that it has zero retention. And by zero retention, I don't mean like the retention is poor. I mean, you know, it's, there's no, no retention. It's not meant to have any retention. It's just basically a cavity that you put your sword in. Uh, so yeah, no retention. So it's great for just storage and keeping the blade clean and uh, things like that, but I, I don't think you'd get much actual use out of this if you tried to put a belt on it and, and wear it. I don't know, maybe you could, but uh, there's really no no retention to speak of. So keep that in mind, but but as something to protect your blade, works just fine. So overall specs, uh, just under two and a half pounds, just over a 30 inch blade. I think it's 32 inch blade. It is an arming sword, as you can see, one handed sword. Um, 5160 spring steel blade, pretty sure I believe. I'll post all the actual stats down below, so don't take my word for it. Read the actual numbers, but I'm pretty sure that's what it is. Um, I'm not gonna really go into too much of the history of this sword, uh, but it looks really cool. That's why I got it, it looks really cool. I love this really wide um, guard. Guard, I love this really wide guard you can see right there. Now, as a side note, I have done a few things to this sword. I've cleaned up the finish on the blade a little bit and uh, did some antiquing on the guard and the pommel. But other than that, it's it's pretty much, pretty much stock. So it has a, a little bit of spring to the blade, but it's still, it's fairly rigid. Let's see if I can get the uh, little bit of the springiness. And of course, you know, it's not a super long blade, but uh, pretty rigid, pretty thick stock through here. And then it tapers down, gets really thin and flat on the tip. So you can get some decent cutting on the tip here, uh, but then some good rigidity where the fuller is so that you get some nice thrusting without too much deformation of the blade uh, when it hits targets. So the, the finish on the blade, speaking of the blade, is pretty rough. It had a lot of scratches, a lot of um, scuffs on it, pretty rough grinding. Uh, the grind marks are kind of at a weird angle, things like that. I've, I've took some time to kind of clean it up a little bit. I haven't done a ton of work on it. I haven't really cared to, uh, but I did a little bit of work on it and cleaned it up a tad. Fuller, not quite even. You can see it's a, a little off center on these portions right here. A um, little bit thicker on either side. So it looks like whatever jig they're using to cut out this fuller, it creates the same inconsistency on both sides, if that makes sense. So it's wider down here on this side when you flip it over. It's also wider on this side. 
Uh, so it looks like it is a some sort of jig they put it in to create this fuller and it's just not quite on center. It terminates roughly at the same spot. It's maybe a millimeter, two millimeters off. So not too bad. As is the case with most Indian forges, they come out of the factory completely dull. And I mean completely dull. Um, you can see the, so I had this sharpened by Cult of Athena and the, the sharpening starts about right here. So, oh, let's go to this side. So if you can see the edge up here, right up here, you can see how it's really just a square. I mean, it is completely dull. And Indian forges seem to produce all their swords like that, completely dull. I assume it's for importation, exportation laws, and or it makes it available for every country that doesn't allow sharpened swords to come in or, or allow sharpened swords at all. So it is completely dull. So that means when you do sharpen it, uh, you got to remove a lot of material, which means you're going to get a little bit of a inconsistent shape. So if you run your hands across here, you can tell how it gets ever so slightly more narrow where they start grinding. You do lose a little bit of width material, but then you also get this huge secondary bevel. I mean, it is just massive, giant secondary bevel. And this isn't even all that sharp. It's reasonably sharp. It's functionally sharp, but it's, it's definitely not, uh, particularly sharp, not as sharp as I'd like it. I've got other Cult of Athena swords that are sharper that they've done. So this one in particular just didn't get that great of an edge in terms of uh, sharpness. But, um, you know, it's, it's really kind of a looks thing. I, I don't like the way that secondary bevel looks. It's not historically accurate. Not that I particularly go for super historically accurate, um, but it, it, does, it also affects the cutting performance a little bit, having this kind of wider channel um, does slightly affect its ability to cut through material. Although your average person probably wouldn't notice a difference, but keep that in mind, Indian forges. It's one of the reasons why I just kind of avoid them now. Um, I stick to, if I'm going for mass produced foreign made swords, I'm gonna go with Chinese made swords because they actually produce them sharp from the factory. Um, so you don't have this huge secondary bevel issue. You'll get a bevel, but nothing, nothing like this. So. Uh, much better and you don't have to pay for somebody to sharpen them because they they come reasonably sharp uh, They come about as sharp as this is after the sharpening service. So just good. So fine um, Anyways, <laughs> sorry guys. Here is the uh, the B the below arms Marking which is nice. I like it. It's pretty handsome looking. It's kind of cool. It's in a decent spot. It's all right uh, the Guard is nice. No sharp edges it's all good, um, which, you know, to be honest with you, is uh, refreshing because I bought a custom Valiant Armory arming sword that had much sharper edges than this did. Um, so the fact that this one's been at least somewhat taken down, I mean, it's not super smooth, but uh, it, it's not gonna cut you. The, uh, did I mention I did antiquing on here? So if you buy this, it's gonna have the satin finish on the, the pommel and the guard. I've done my own antiquing on it to kind of give it a, a blued finish there, kind of a distressed blued finish. But uh, if you buy it brand new, it's not gonna have that. The grip, wood core, cord wrapped, leather wrapped, it's done really, really well. I, I love the grip on this thing. Um, it feels good. It's the right size for my hand. It's got these ridges on there that really lock your fingers in. Feels really, really, really good. And it's done well. Uh, the seam, you can see right there, is hardly noticeable. It's all smooth. Everything's good. There's no weirdness going on. Um, I really like those grips. And it's uh, a little bit different than what you typically see on swords at this price point coming from uh, India. So I really, really like that. Um, the other thing that I want to mention is on a negative aspect, there is a lot of glue spillover, uh, just kind of all over the place. You've got glue poking out here. You've got some glue poking out up there. It's not going to affect functionality. Um, it's not super obvious. If you look over here, you can kind of really see it. Maybe I can focus there. Uh, but you know, it is what it is. Uh, the other thing I want to notice note is that the fitting of the blade into the guard is actually pretty good, pretty even. However, they packed it full of epoxy. 
Um, I don't mind that. I think it looks fine. It kind of fills in that gap. It's, you know, it's not as good as maybe a, a really nice high-end sword that uh, has a really tight fit, uh, but it is what it is. So if you don't like epoxy in there, then you're not going to like this, but uh, I'm fine with it. I don't have a problem with it. I think it looks fine. Potentially kind of increases the stability, maybe. Pommel is peened. Ooh. Pommel is peened, if I can point it at the camera here. I've cleaned it up a little bit. I've smoothed it out. It didn't look even this good when I bought it. But uh, it's, you know, once again, typical of your Indian forge peens. They're, they're usually pretty ugly, pretty sloppy. You can clean them up to at least make them smooth, but they're always going to look pretty freaking ugly. Um, so that's that. Uh, by the way, I love the, the shape of the pommel. Looks really, really cool. And that's kind of why I, I bought this sword is it's affordable. It's $200, brand new. Uh, you can get the blemished version for even less than that. So a very affordable sword that you can purchase to play around with, to use, to collect, whatever you want to do. Looks really cool. The design is really, really nice. I liked it. It uh, feels good in the hand. Um, the blade is maybe a slightly heavier than I'd like it, but it's it's not bad. Um, it moves really, really well, especially at this uh, this price point. So that is a look at the Belor Arms Teutonic Arming Sword in case you were wanting to maybe get one. This is more or less what you're kind of looking at. So let me know if you have any questions down below, if there's anything I missed, stupid things I've said. I'm sure there's a lot. Uh, please comment down there and let me know what I screwed up. And I will thank you for that and give you a thumbs up and maybe, maybe a heart on your comment. All right, guys.